Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I'd like to go ahead and open the meeting for the Tuesday, July 6, 2021, Warrington Board of Alderman meeting. If you would, rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item will be the consent agenda. We have the regular and executive session minutes from June 15th, 2021. Work session minutes with planning and zoning on June 16th, 2021. The employee uniform pant pants bid awarded to clean, which was low bid. And the road striping bid awarded to parking lot Picasso is in the amount of $6,920. And they were the only bid. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, seconded by Alderman Schultz. Roll call vote. Alderman Dunwoody? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Shorter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jackson? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Next is the public comment section. Uh, we'll start off with the public comment section with any general comments someone would like to say. Please come to the microphone. State your name, we'll give you five minutes to speak. Not see anybody, we'll move on to the PNZ items. The first one will be Cool College Edition Subdivision, the preliminary final plat of SUBD 92. Is there anybody who would like to speak on that or come to the podium and speak on that? State your name, we'll give you five minutes to speak. I was Suckford. <clears throat> well, I got a few questions. Uh, here about three years ago, that piece of property came up for, for sale. And I went down and I met with some in the building department. And they said that they told me some things at that time that that was going to need a sidewalk on all three sides, that college would be a three foot, Rosha would be a three foot, and in front of the school would be a five foot with a curb. Is that correct? I'm not sure, to be honest. You know, is that what they got drawn up now? I'm, I'm kind of looking at some of the staff to maybe, do you guys know what he's what he speaking of? Or Cooling College? Yes, but the five, the curb is what you're speaking of, correct? And the a sidewalks. Curb, a five foot sidewalk with a curb on Cool Avenue across the school. That's what they told me. Right. So for this project there, they're looking at putting sidewalks on college and painting to the front were uh, cool and Boschel. Uh, the Boschel from cool to 47 at the end of budget for 2122 for engineering for sidewalks and sewer. For us? Yes. Does that answer the question? Probably not. Do we know how wide the one is on the cool that they're putting into it? Is it going to be a minimum? I think it has I to be an ADA compliance. It doesn't really question. answer it in general. Do I? Does that answer the question you were asking about? No, admin it does not. So I don't know what was said before by who on, in our city. I mean, I, obviously you told us, but I don't know who said that. There were um, two, two guys down at the building department that morning when I went down there, and they both agreed with the same thing when they were talking. You know, so that's, that's all I got to go on. I don't have their names, anything like that. Now, the other thing that I have... Uh, they told me there would have to be a storm water test. You know, and what I'm talking about, I guess they, something like that when it rains out a storm. So I asked him at the time who would be paying for that. And he said, whoever builds the, prop, builds the property, at the property. So now, is that is, uh, requiring us to yet? He said, see, at that time, there was, you only put three lots on that piece of property. He said, you may lose one of those lots for, for a detention pond. But he said there had to be a test run. Now, I, tell, I will say this much. In the last month, we've had three times that that water has gone over Valshall Avenue down in that corner down there. Three times? Three times. There's one time, the front part of June, 
And then the other two just here, what, 10 days ago or so? So that really needs to be looked into somehow to stop it or stop it before it gets down there. I've, I've heard a second. I've had a, somebody else get contact me about the water and, and the creek that it was damming up on the creek as well. Is that correct? Do what? I, I've heard the same thing about the water coming up and mm -hmm. filling some of the basements around there. According to my figure pretty close, if they put four houses on there, by the time you get the houses, the sidewalks, the driveways, there's going to be about 45 to 50 percent of that ground going to be covered with, with something. And whenever it rains, it drains off much faster off gutters, down gutters, and all concrete and roofs and stuff like that. So that's going to just add that much more to the problem. So I think that should be looked into. I'm not ignoring you, I'm just trying to take notes so that I can keep everything straight from what you're asking. Because that's all I have. Because I may not have all the answers today, because, but we'll look into it. There's, there's a lot of, I mean, then in fact, my flood in the house, but there's about three basins down below us. Right. And then it did flood this last, uh, and I know you know about it. Yes, that's that's what I mean. Shirley contacted me yeah. uh, over the weekend and, the, and yeah. then last week. So it should be looked into now before it gets too far along. So is there any way I can stop by your house later, like next week and give you some answers to some of these after we look into them? Well, that'd be, be nice. Yeah, or, I mean, I don't mind as long as you're okay with that. Yeah, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, okay. I will. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else to speak about the Cool College Edition Subdivision uh, Preliminary and Final Plat for SUBD-92? Not seeing anybody, we'll move on to the Estates of Pickney Ridge, Final Plat, SUBD-83. Hello, my name is Steve Randall with Cochran Engineering. I'm the design engineer for the subdivision and I just want to let everybody know I'm here to answer any questions that you may have as they come up. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak on that matter? All right, we'll move on to the uh, Flake House rezone in, in ZC-68. Come forth to the podium, please. And I'll just explain why you're walking up here. The reason why is because we have a video going and people who are seeing this on YouTube later on want to see who it is that's asking a question. It's, it's one of our previous ones. Okay, that's fine. We can back up to the other the one. <clears throat> okay. Um, is, the, is that the final grading, the way it's set now? Have we reached final grading? Is that the way it's... That's my... All right, so the way that they have, they're directing the water right now is yeah. not final? No, that was to prevent the mud and all the water from coming onto the street. Okay. So back to the Flake House rezoning uh, for ZC-68. Not seeing anybody, we'll move on to the Flake, Flake House subdivision, preliminary and final plat, SUBD-93. Not seeing anybody from there. We'll move on to Board of Alderman comments. I'm up, all right. First, I would like to thank the uh, Fair Board for the hard work they're putting in to uh, put on the fair this year and thank them for the parade that uh, we had on Sunday. Also, I'd um, like to thank everyone that came out to the parade Sunday. I know it was a holiday and a lot of people were out of town, but it looked like we had a good turnout and everything like that. And then um, finally, I'd like to thank all the Queen contestants who participated in that and congratulate Ashley Pullen for being this year's Queen. So. Thank you. 
Well, I'd just like to say I'm sorry I missed the parade. <laughs> <laughs> I was out of town, but everyone said it was good, so. It was. I think uh, a lot of people were a little nervous that it wasn't going to be as good of a turnout. And uh, I think as the parade started, there wasn't as many people down at that end. But as you moved along, it was uh, it became a little more packed and uh, probably one of the better turnouts I've seen in a while. So I was really happy to see it. Um, I think there's some things we could work on for different things on the, the parade route and some other things maybe next year. But we'll uh, we'll get with the fair board and try and work through those issues. Um, any other comments? All right, move on to the underwriter proposal for bonds. Joy Howard, I believe you're up. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully I've brought everything up I need. Uh, I'm Joy Howard, I'm your financial advisor. For those of you who don't know me, and I've served as your financial advisor for many years. Um, tonight I'm here to talk about the sale of your waterworks and sewage system revenue bonds. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the resolution that you'll be approving later. This is a process when you're doing a bond issue. So basically after I get engaged, I work with your staff in putting together a lot of documentation that's used to get a bond rating to, in order to get you the most favorable interest rate. And we went through that process and the issue was rated A plus by Standard & Poor's, which is a very good rating. But we wanted even a better rating to ensure that you get the very lowest possible interest rate. So we also went to a bond insurer, um, Build America Mutual, which is the insurance company that insured your last issue, Waterworks <coughs> and Sewage Revenue Bonds, and they agreed to insure your issue. Uh, so the bonds are going to be rated double A with a, what's called an underlying rating from Standard & Poor's. There'll be both ratings that show up. Um, tonight when you pass the resolution, one of the things that you'll be approving is uh, the commitment letter from Build America Mutual. That commitment letter um, sets forth the quote, their, their fee quote and their terms, but it doesn't in any obli way obligate the city at this time, it, except that if you proceed with insurance, it basically you agree that you're going to proceed with Build America Mutual and not another company. And then everything is finalized and paid for at the time of the bond closing. Um, after we got the rating and we got the insurance, then we prepared a request for proposal that we sent to many underwriting firms and we received back nine proposals, which is what's showing up on the screen right now. Nine proposals is a very large amount of proposals, which is great. It shows a lot of interest in the city. It shows that our move to get insurance was the right move. And of course, you may know that interest rates right now are at historical low levels, which is great. Just you just getting into the market at the perfect time. Um, the most I I put together when I do a request for a proposal, I put together many questions that I want the firms to respond to, uh, and some of those things could basically kick the firms out. <laughs> but the main thing is that I'm looking at is at the very bottom of the page, which is the true interest cost. And I'm looking for what's called rate indexing. If you want to go in detail through this spreadsheet, you'll notice that some of the firms put together indications of interest on their rate, which isn't a very good proposal. That means um, we're, we're planning on having our actual sales, setting the final rates and prices at your next meeting on the 20th. Um, and for those firms who just did an indication of rates, basically when we get to the 20th, they can change their rates and say, uh, that's what the market is, that's what it took for us to sell, and they can raise their rates kind of to any level they want. The firms who index their proposals, um, there's published indexes, kind of like if you were looking at stocks, it would be like the Dow Jones, but it's a published set of rates, and the, the firms agreed that they would increase their rates or decrease their rates according to this published index. So if you look at Hilltop Securities, 
their true interest cost, which is a combination of interest rates and their fees, is 2.166. And that could go up or down. It can go down if interest rates go down between now and the 20th. At the very bottom of the page, it talks about volatility. Basically, the indexes come out a day before today. Every, they all have a lag. They come out like at 3 in the afternoon. So if I was pricing, this is a, a little complicated. I'm trying to think of how to explain it because we had this long holiday weekend. But if we were pricing the bonds tomorrow, then the index would be the one that came out today. So the firms, some of the firms want to add a little bit of flexibility or volatility into their um, proposals so that if on the day of sale this, the market doesn't follow the index, they have a little bit of, of flexibility. With all that being said, the bottom line is Hilltop Securities um, out of St. Louis had the best proposal as far as interest rates and it's an index proposal. So that is the firm that I'm recommending and that is the other action that's in the resolution is to select the underwriter. It also approves uh, the form of what's called the preliminary official statement, which is a detailed document that the underwriter will use for selling the securities. And I think that's pretty much what I need to tell you, but I'm here to answer any questions you have. And that was Bonds 101. I hope, <laughs> I hope it wasn't too complicated. Oh, I do have one other thing to tell you. Um, basically, when I put, I've been, we've been working together running models for several months on what this was going to cost. And um, I, I had estimated a true interest cost of 2.5227%. So you'll notice that all of the proposals, except for maybe the last two, had significantly better rates than I was projecting. That could change in the next two weeks, but I don't, I don't expect it to go back to 2.5. <laughs> Questions. What is the plus expense for um, on Hilltop Securities? The plus uh, expense of nine thousand. They had like the lowest underwriting fees of any of the other firms, but but they also had certain expenses that are required regulatory fees, um, and underwriters council they quoted it separate um, from their regular underwriting discount. But if you added the two together, the expenses in there underwriting. <coughs> spread, they came out at 0.6173, which is still at near the low end of the fees that were quoted by other firms. Thank you. It's a good question. You're very, you're, you must have actually read this spreadsheet. <laughs> so they will hold that 2.66 for us? Is that what you're on uh, Hilltop? Um, it, it will only change to the extent this published index changes. Okay. And it could actually come out lower if rates go down. Okay. But yes, they're they're committed to what they put in their proposal. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> Thank you. Um, I'm also going to be talking about the a little bit more about the sizing of the issue. It, did you want me to do that now, or did you want to? I can't remember. Resolution was next. Pardon? I think the resolution was next. Okay, so do you want me to stay up here because I'm on the next item as well? That's fine. So, resolution number 334, a resolution of the Board of Walden and City of Warrington, Missouri, selecting an underwriter and authorizing certain preliminary actions in connection with the proposed in insurance by the city of its combined waterworks and sewage system revenue bonds series 2021. Do you want to go ahead and speak on that, Joy? Go ahead. Oh, are you ready for me? Yes. Okay, so the n next item um, had to do with the, the size. On. We got to do the roll, we got to do a roll call vote. We need a first and a second to approve the resolution and then we do a roll call vote. Not even knowing about the resolution first? That's what she was going to speak on was a resolution. I'm, I'm speaking on a slightly different topic. Okay. All right. So you need a motion to accept Hilltop Securities? No, just the resolution 334. Correct. 
Yes, so Hilltop Securities is part of the resolution. Correct. But yeah. under it, if you're, I'll entertain a motion or I'll entertain a, a first reading. Is that what you need? First reading, first and second to approve the reading of the resolution and then the roll call vote. Correct. All right. So I guess I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of resolution number 331. Sorry, 334. Three, 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 I'm sorry. 334. Three, second. Motion made by Alderman Crump. Second by Alderman. I'm sorry. Quarter. That's his name. I'm trying to catch everything here. Quarter. <laughs> A resolution of the Board of Aldermen of the City of Warrenton selecting an underwriter and authorizing certain preliminary actions in connection with the proposed issuance by the City of its Combined Waterworks and Sewage System Revenue Bonds Series 2021. Entertain a motion for the second reading. No, oh. no second reading. We just need one reading. <laughs> All right, I'll entertain or we'll entertain a motion to we'll call vote. approve the reading of. Okay. okay roll call vote. This is not a fun one why are we doing this so different than we've done anything else we only need one roll it's call a resolution vote. alderman schultz yes alderman crump yes alderman quarter yes alderman cullum yes alderman jaspering yes alderman deloy yes resolution passes six to zero this is as easy as we make it look, is it? Oh, it's it's wonderful today. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's easy. I'll tell you right now, I'll probably be off the rest of these too. <laughs> so should I are you ready for me? Go ahead, man. Okay, so the next item really has to do with action that you're going to be taking at the meeting on the twentieth. And at that time it will be an ordinance. Um, and it'll be an ordinance that sets forth all of the terms and conditions of the bonds in detail. And that includes the interest rate, the dates that are subject to optional redemption, and the size of the issue. So you have a, an authorized voter approved issue of 5590000 And throughout our planning process, we being myself and your staff, have worked on the five million five hundred ninety thousand or basically five million six hundred thousand as the construction budget the market nowadays um, the firms set interest rates higher than the than what they're going to sell the public to what the public wants is their return and the impact of that I'm going to try and keep as easy as possible because there's nothing easy about what I'm going to tell you except the bottom line <laughs> the but Basically, when they set the interest rates higher than the reoffering yields, instead of giving you back five million five hundred ninety thousand, they pay a premium for the bonds. And in the case of the um, Hilltop proposal, we're estimating the rates aren't final yet. As I said, they'll be indexed. But based on the rates that that we had in the proposal, um, just a second, I'm on the wrong page. That premium for you to get the um, five million, approximately five million six hundred thousand, uh, they have offered a premium of approximately six hundred seventy-seven thousand, reducing your issue size to five million thirty thousand. In other words, we're not going to take all of that premium that's above and beyond what your construction budget was. We're going to reduce your issue size but the amount for construction will remain the same. And that basically brings the debt service back to the same as if, there, if you had done a 5590000 issue without any premium, by reducing the issue size, the debt service comes out about the same as we've been projecting. Um, and the main reason I wanted to tell you this is so next week when we come back, it may be a little bit different than 530000 but when I come back, I didn't want you to be surprised that I that the issue will be smaller than what was authorized. So with that being extremely complicated, <laughs> uh, do you have any questions on that? Questions? I don't believe we do. <coughs> I will be back at your next meeting. It's good to be here. I haven't. I've. I, we've had a lot of of meetings. Um, and they've all been on Zoom, so <laughs> it's really nice to be able to see people in person again. 
Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. <clears throat> Our next we'll hear from Director of Planning and Development and Public uh, Comments, I guess, for Tim Burks. Board members, are we starting with the public comments? No. No, I'm sorry. Should have, it's our comments. Just your report. Just okay. So uh, the first project is going to be the Cool College Edition. It's uh, 0 0.91 acres of, on Cool Avenue between College and Boschel. It's a preliminary and final record plat together. Okay, the uh, applicant is ML Land uh, Holdings LLC. Excuse me. The uh, St. Charles Engineering Surveying Incorporated on behalf of ML Land Holdings LLC has submitted an application for a preliminary and record plat for a 0 0.91 acre of land on the west side of Cool Avenue between College and Boschel Avenue. Uh, the preliminary and final plat depicts four single family homes, lots, I mean, correction. Uh, with lot size minimum frontage requirement meeting or exceeding the R2 medium dis density single family residential district. Okay. The project um, meets all the uh, future land use plans within the Warren uh, Comprehensive Plan designated subject site as single family residential. Uh, the poles the proposal melds into the existing neighborhood without needs for a new infrastructure that would impact the existing development pattern. Uh, the proposal subdivision of the land is located on the existing roadway with design standards consistent with the R2 medium district density single family residential district uh, utilizing existing infrastructure within the area uh, helps facilitate and develop meld, melding into an existing development pattern within the area and provision of a single family lots that are consistent with the surrounding area. Uh, staff analysis, staff would note the following features of the proposed preliminary and record plat. Sidewalks are not included on the uh, proposed preliminary record plat. Um, Section 410.140.a.2 states the developer of the land on each side of the existing streets responsible for installation of those sidewalks. Cool, or College Cool and Boschel um, Avenue uh, are all existing streets. Therefore, sidewalks sh should be included on the frontage of each of the applicant's roadway. We propose that the sidewalks be um, be constructed on College Avenue and pay into the sidewalk fund for uh, Cool and Voschel. Um, the plan does not include any area for installation of mailbox. Um, staff has received correspondence from the United States Postal Service that the cluster mailbox will not be required. Uh, no changes to stormwater along the roadway are proposed as the street is existing. Um, we have sent the calculations off to our engineer. They have um, sent back their review. Uh, all the calculations are within standards. Uh, the letters should be attached to the reports. Okay. Um, let's see. It's determined no immediate Im adverse impact will result to the adjacent property and contribution is to be made to the stormwater Management Improvement Fund, subsection three states that the required conditions based on the differential pre and post development runoff shall be $200. The preliminary plat notes the contribution to open space fund in the amount of $1,152 required. Uh, uh, this project was presented to the Planning and Zoning Staff has reviewed the proposed preliminary final plat and found that the proposal is consistent with the 
consistent with Chapter 410 subdivision regulation and warrant in the municipal code. Further, the proposed design of the residential subdivision furthers the goal of the comprehensive plan. The staff recommends approval of the preliminary final plat with the following conditions. Sidewalks will be installed along the front of College Avenue and pay into the sidewalk fund for Boston. Cool. Contribution to the stormwater management improvement fund in the amount of $200 will be deposited with the city. And contribution to the open space fund in the amount of $1,152 will be deposited with the city. That's all I have. Do you have any questions? Thank you. The only question I have, Tim, was uh, we're going to make sure that there is silt fence around that property when they uh, start construction there. Okay. Um, let's make sure that is. I think there's an, it sounds like there's an issue with water running down through there, so let's just make sure there's silt fence okay. around it. And the engineers here, if you have any other questions. Um, with that. As we're good with the water. <laughs> I think some of that also has to do with looking into the ditches around there as well. I think that's something we've talked about looking into. Uh, I think they've gotten filled in over the years with either cinder or what be it, and I think that's causing some of the issues as well. Just when I went out there and looked at it at least. So we need to kind of look into whose responsibility that is. If it's ours, we need to take care of that. That probably needs to be taken care of before any we need to take a look at that, whoever's responsibility that is, to take a look at that prior to the start uh, of building on that. So it keeps everybody out of trouble. Any other questions? Okay. Next project is the Pinkney Ridge subdivision plat as you need a ring. It's thirty three point Two one acres at the intersection of Pinkney Drive and Warrior Avenue. This is going to be the final plat. Uh, the applicant is George Heath. Uh, George Heath has submitted an application for a final <coughs> plat for 33.21 acre tract land at the intersection of Pinkney Drive and Warrior Avenue. The final plat fits 98 single family lots with common ground and easements for stormwater management. All proposed residential lots comply with the minimum lot size. Requirements of the R2 single family residential district and the lots comply with the residential subdivision design requirements for a minimum lot width. Additionally, the final plat is consistent with the preliminary plat previous approved for the subject site. Staff now staff will note the following features from the proposed final plat. Lots budding uh, Pinkney Drive show the rear yard easement and set back along Pinkney Drive, which will result in an individual lot access off interior streets instead of a, a permitted drives, driveways access off of Bruiser Street. Consistent with the preliminary plat and the final, the final plat includes area of installation of mailboxes. Uh, the facilities are located outside the right of way and easements on common ground. Uh, stormwater design has been submitted in accordance with the city code requirements. Final ver verification and approval of the design shall be completed prior to the execution of the flat by the city. Uh, common ground areas include, are included on the site. These areas include stormwater detention area, landscape, slash sign area, and cluster mailbox area. The parking lane will submit it and approve and is required in the condition of the preliminary plat. Completion of escrow will be required guaranteeing installation of improvements for the site. Uh, this project was presented to the PNC on July 1st and was uh, presented with no public comments. The site plan was approved 6 to 0 with two absences and two vacancies. Staff recommendation staff has reviewed the proposed final plat in accordance with Chapter 410. Uh, subdivision regulations, the code, the proposed design of the residential subdivision features the goal of the comprehensive plan and is consistent with the approval, uh, the approved preliminary plat for the development. Staff recommends approval of the final plat with the following items provided prior to the execution of the plat by the city. 
approval of the stormwater management plan, completion of that scroll will require improvements, approving or approval of the parking lane plan, and submission of identity for maintenance of common elements within the subdivision. Anybody have any questions for me? Or two. The next project is going to be the Flake House zone change. It's 21.44 acres on the west side of South Water Street. Uh, it's going to be rezoning from Ag to R1. Hickory Ridge Family LLC is the applicant. Um, Hickory Ridge Family LLC has submitted an application for change in zoning for 22.44 acre tract of land on the west side of South Water Street. The request is to rezone the area from AG, Agricultural Reserve District, to R1, Low Density Residential District. The preliminary plat, final plat create one new lot that has been submitted in conjunction with the, with the change in the zoning application. These requests are discussed in this subsequent report. So he's got 21 acres and he's carving out a um, 1.39 acre lot on the subdivision that goes with this. Okay. The comprehensive plan includes parks, trail system concept map that shows a future trail alignment impacting the subject site. Um, while the project does not propose development of the full site, any development of this site should ensure that the current actions do not preclude future trail development through the area. Uh, a future land map designate this parcel as rural, large lot residential. Uh, the comprehensive plan notes approximately density within this area as one to three acre dwellings. Okay. Uh, staff analysis, the proposed, uh, proposal seeks to permit zoning that would allow for a subdivision that would permit development of single family dwellings with a minimum lot size of one acre. Access to the site is provided off of South Water Street and the site is bisected by creek running east to west. Um, existing utility service to the area includes street, has been designed for low impact, low density development per the comprehensive plan designation of rural large lot residential. Uh, zoning of this subject site, low, dental, low density residential R1 would result in, in intensity and use of development consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, the Flake House rezone was presented to the planning and zoning on July 1st. Uh, with no public comments, the, the site plan was approved six to zero with two absence and two vacancies. Uh, staff recommendation, staff has to review the request to rezone the subject site with Agricultural Reserve District to R1 Low Density Residential District. All items and notices are required by the state and local law have been provided and completed. The proposal is consistent with the future land map use and the policies within the comprehensive plan. Staff recommends approval of the request rezone uh, the property to R1 as submitted by the petitioner. Do you have any questions? Any questions on the zone change? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't believe so, I'm going to move on. Okay, the next project is the Flake House preliminary plat final Record plat SUBD 93. It's uh, it's uh, 21.44 acres on the west side of South Water Street. The preliminary and final plat. Um, the applicant is Hickory Ridge Family LLC. Lewis and Beatty. Incorporated on behalf of Hickory Ridge Family LLC has submitted an application for a preliminary slash final record plat for a 1.39 acres 
area of land along Water Street. The preliminary and final plat depicts one single family lot meeting or exceeding the R1 low density residential district requirement. Okay. Uh, the future land use with the Warrington Comprehensive Plan designate the subject site as rural large lot residential. Uh, the proposed preliminary final record simply carves out a 1.39 acre track out of a larger track of land, uh, future development and or subdivisions of the larger track will be required submission of a new preliminary plat showing proposed lot configuration and utility service to the proposed uh, subdivision. Uh, staff would note the following for, uh, features for the proposed preliminary and final plat record. Um, the comprehensive plan designate the entire area as rural large lot residential and proposed and the proposed subdivision does not create inconsistencies with the future land use plan of the city. Uh, the plan modifies one existing lot by creating two lots each uh, meeting the minimum design standards for lots within the R1 low density residential district. Uh, sidewalks is not included on the plans in section 405.080.g.3 exempts de a development within the R1 district from providing sidewalk uh, exempt in the situation in which the Board of Aldermen believe public safety demands for their installation. Staff does not believe sidewalks in this location should be required. Um, no additional development impact impacting stormwater is uh, contemplated. As, a, as such, a stormwater management plan is not required. And the Flake House subdivision preliminary plat and final plat was presented at the July 1st planning and zoning uh, with no public comments. The site plan was approved six to zero with two absence and two vacancies. Uh, staff has reviewed the preliminary slash final record plat and found that the proposal is consistent with chapter 410 subdivision regulations of the Warrington Municipal Code. Further, the proposed design of the residential subdivision furthers the goal of the comprehensive plan. Staff recommends the approval of the preliminary final plat with the following condition. Um, the, the payment to the uh, special park fund will not be needed due to the calculations being a 0 0.192. Uh, section 410.150B states that the calculations are below 0 0.60, um, the acres shall be rounded to zeros. So no, uh, no special park fund. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. no. <coughs> I don't believe so, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Next, we'll hear from City Administrator Brandy Walters. Good evening. Um, the first thing that I have for you tonight is tourism met on June 22nd, and they have recommendations to pay for the fireworks display for this year of $15,000. Dairy Queen has an intra interstate attraction sign for $600, and Relax Inn also has an interstate attraction sign that they would like to pay $600 to. The total is $16,200, which are all budgeted items. Any questions on those? I'll entertain a motion to approve the tourism recommendation in the amount of $16,200. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Crump. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. I have for you tonight is an ordinance which will be later on the agenda um, but that is just we had to make some changes when we switched over to show me courts and one of the fees that was included in our court in our surcharge for our court costs was a three dollar sheriff's retirement fund um, and the state courts has reversed that and so we're removing that out of our ordinance so that's not going to be part of our court fees anymore and I just want to let you know that's an ordinance later on if you guys have any questions 
The next thing I have for you is operational updates. And the only thing I have for you tonight, I have a couple things. One is, as you know, we're kind of trying to change the public comments and all of that, changing around so we get rid of that redundancy. Um, so that's a work in progress. The other thing is the public access channel. I don't know how many of you guys access that and watch it. Um, we've had two complaints on this since it was down in May. It went down, it still shows the video, but it's not showing the audio. So um, we've been working really close with Spectrum to try to get that worked out. We have changed out some different parts in there. Some of those parts have also went bad back in 2019. It's something to do with the conversion on converting it over to get it onto the cable channel. Um, our next step is to purchase a modulator, which is about two to $500 in hopes that it'll fix the problem. My question for you guys is, do you guys want us to continue to work on this for two complaints or do you want to get rid of the public access channel? That's kind of where we're at at this point. So I just want some input from you guys on if you want to continue with it or not. Are these the only two people that watch the public access channel? I don't know. We've only received two complaints since <laughs> May. So we do have the meetings on li live on Zoom. We do have them on um, YouTube. We put them on Facebook. So <coughs> You'll find out if you discontinue it, how many they're, watch it. <laughs> well, right now, there has not been any sound since May. You can see the video, but you can't hear it. Do you, do you have to have Charter or Spectrum, I guess it's called now, to get this public access? It's not available on Hulu or any other network. Like only the no, people it's who have Spectrum our franchise agreement with them, they have to give us that public access. The the city, unlike most cities in Missouri, started doing it back in I don't even know when they started doing it. But Charter paid for the original equipment because they were required to do it as part of the franchise, and then that's kind of been whittled away. We don't have the negotiating power, but we can only do it through Spectrum. They're the only ones now. If somebody came in, if we did it, and had some, like UVerse, for example, they would be required to put it on there if we wanted to require them to put it on there. Like some other internet-based that's going through internet lines in the ground here. But it, Spectrum's the only one legally required to do it by our agreement. I mean, it, it doesn't sound like that much of a cost, but we don't know if it's going to work, two, two to five hundred dollars. and. How do they not know? Or like, how do they not know what's causing the issue? The spectrum is saying that it's on our side, so that's what we're trying to fix. Is whatever it we're is. We're changing parts. We're changing pieces to see if it'll work. Just guessing till we get one right. Yes. Sitting, sitting so somebody we, we from there feedback. know how to do that. John, you can yeah. So the way our system works now is that it puts out an HDMI output. So we have a box that plays the, the access channel that we upload all our stuff on. It's put out on an HDMI, so that HDMI has to get converted to a coax, and then, so that's one converter box that we have to maintain. And then it goes to coax to a <coughs> RF modulator, which is discontinued and has been for quite a few years. That's the part that we don't know is, is good or bad. Um, their next step would be to get rid of the, the conversion from, from um, HDMI to coax, because that's a coax modulator. We would go from a straight from an HDMI to a coax modulator. Um, again, that's all so old equipment. Like it's probably the original one. We have an extra one there that's already been fried, so we replaced this modulator once already. Um, it, it's just old equipment. The Spectrum has to have it in the in the coax to get it up to uh, up on Coleman Road is where they broadcast it from. So. So do we just need to update the system, or are we just going to no up, There's no updating. The, the, the modulator itself has been discontinued. We can buy another one, but it's again, we've got to convert from HDMI to coax is our problem right now. Run across that fiber line when I get it up and running? <laughs> if we can get HDMI to fiber, it'd be great, but I don't, I don't think that's a... That's, it, that's a spectrum it's issue. That's, it's just old technology. The exactly. Spectrum it, it's not... It, you're not going to be able to fix it unless Spectrum decides to uh, go fiber instead of the uh, cable that you're talking about. Correct. They have a, we have a, a coax line that comes into where we project this from in City Hall over there. And that coax line goes to the top of the hill on Coleman Road. And that's what goes put into their system. So until they change that coax line, so, we're, we, we have to get it to coax. So correct me if I'm wrong. Does... Spectrum have capabilities of fiber in our area yet or not? 
I mean, I've, I've heard they do, but I haven't seen it yet, so that's why I'm asking. I believe they do, but I'm, I'm thinking the fiber is more the internet side, not the cable TV uh, side. Thank you. I don't think we should replace it. I mean, it doesn't sound that costly, but we don't know that it's going to fix it, and we're only buying time until the technology's even further. And we're well, there's other ways to... Uh, that we've, we've got Zoom. Zoom. and We've uh, got YouTube. We've got we've yeah. got our... And if anybody wants to see any of the meetings, it's out there. I mean, other than that, doesn't it play like our, our uh, activities we have, like the Easter egg hunt and things of that nature? Yeah. yeah. We also put those out on Facebook and those are also the website and everywhere else also. Advertised yeah. elsewhere. I think we've got enough advertisement elsewhere that the public access isn't an important... Somebody still doesn't have access to that. We could always burn it on a CD and, and give them the CD if they come into City Hall. I mean, it's it, it wouldn't be no cost or time for us really. CD, so, yeah. I mean, if I don't save your money. Yep. I agree. <clears throat> Due to that being part of a contract, counselor, is that something we'd have to have on the next agenda to decide? No, no. I mean, they just provide us access to do it. Charter's not going to care if we do it or not. You know, they just give us a channel, and when they changed the channel configurations a couple years ago, I think that lessened a lot of the people that watched it. It was hard to find. But no, we don't need to modify the agreement. Right. Okay. Um, I think you got the majority of the boards. Got it. That's all Is I there got anybody for you. opposed to not fixing it? Now you get your answer. Okay. That's all I have for you tonight. All right, next word from Director of Operations, John Struckoff. Good evening. The only thing I have for you tonight is a vacate of utility easement um, for our sewer line project that we that we um, have a bid for tonight. Um, we went out for easements on this property. Uh, he was the first one to sign. We recorded it. We were all excited, and then uh, the plans had to change. So um, the plans changed on the neighboring property, which changed his easement, so we had we have since gotten a new easement from him, so we just need to vacate the old one, or the original one that we got from him. So it just shifted the easement a little bit on this property. That's all it'll it be is. a bill later on. It'll be a bill later on tonight. Okay. <coughs> That's all I have for you. All right, thank you. Next, we'll hear from Finance Officer Dina Belaska. Good evening. You have before you a list of claims for your approval. Claims totaling $755,238.21. Were there any questions related to that list of claims? Any questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve the accounts payable in the amount of $755,238.21. So moved. Uh, two people. Second. Can claim it. You can give to him, I'll second. Okay. So, was it Deloy first? Yeah, that's okay. who I heard. Motion from Alderman Deloy, seconded by Alderman Cullum. Roll call vote. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspring? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. You also have a list of um, an actual financials, the May financials in front of you. Um, highlights from the May financials for the general fund. Revenues are about 324000 above budget, primarily related to sales tax in the general fund, which is about 292000 of that. Um, general fund operating expenses, about 440000 below budget. Of that, about 195000 is related to wages for vacant positions. Um, in the water and sewer fund, You'll notice that revenues are about 23,000 below budget. So a mixture there of water sales that are down slightly, uh, while sewer sales are 58,000 above budget. Um, connection fees for new construction, 12,000 above budget. And industrial sewer, which is coke, the coke plant, is about um, 20,000 below budget. Operating expenses in the water and sewer fund are 254000 below budget. In that fund, wages make up about 85000 of that amount for vacancies. The other larger items are uh, 20000 related to um, meters that we still expect to spend. Then you have pumps and I&I &I repair. 
It's below budget about 71000 and again, that just depends on need um, when those are spent. Were there any questions related to those May financials? <coughs> questions? I believe so, Dan. Thank you. Next, we're from Aquatics Director Lisa Kramer. Good evening. You have in front of you the aquatic report for the month of June. We had a great June month. Uh, the pool is now fully opened and we have a party tent in the parking lot that is for our patrons to have a place to eat snacks um, or they can rent it for birthday parties and we've had a few parties um, in June already. We have also taught 82 private swim lessons during the month of June plus uh, 25 campers came over from Wesleyan Church and another 30 campers from Little Lamb St. John Lutheran Church for swim lessons as well. Um, and a future program coming up is on Tuesday, August 3rd. We will be hosting the National Night Out program. This will be held at the athletic complex from four to eight. It's a program to promote police community partnerships, crime, drug, and violence prevention, safety, and neighborhood unity. And not only will there be police cars and fire trucks, but also the highway patrol boat and a helicopter. Um, there will be live music, face painting, and free food. Um, this event is open to the public and free for everyone to enjoy. It'll be family friendly. Um, so hopefully everybody will come out for that program as well. Does anybody have any questions? I got one. Um, I was just wondering, uh, I think it was the last couple storms we had and you guys closed down for those storms. I was wondering why you closed the whole facility for that, not just the outside. So whenever there's thunder or lightning within a six mile radius, we are not allowed to be open um, via our insurance policy as well as um, the guidelines for the, from the CDC says that um, the lightning can come through the pipes through into the pool. So whether it's an indoor or outdoor pool, that is why we close. Um, we're also not supposed to let people in to the showers. You're not supposed to use telephones because of the wires and things like that. So that is why we close. Okay, I was just wondering. It was actually asked a while back that happened. Um, and we even looked into some grounding issues that maybe and it was like the metal building was, or what it was. It, it was just kind of the way it was built and structural wise it was recommended not just to be able to shut down during the time of a storm and then open back up afterwards <coughs> if hours allow cool. any other questions I right, thank you next we'll hear from maintenance and grounds director brad boozy cruz good evening mayor and board <coughs> excuse me you have the, my monthly report here for uh June. As you can see the grass cutting is the main thing and we're still three people short so we're uh, trying the best we can to keep up with everything. Uh, a couple other uh, things that we've uh, accomplished during the month of June. We've got, the, I don't know if any of you all walk up at Spectre Lake but the new bench for uh, Maxine Huff uh, <clears throat> was uh, we got that installed uh, here a, a week ago. Uh, she was one of our park board members for uh, 19 years. The family uh, uh, bought a bench to honor her. Uh, we got that put in. We got the new uh, court clear, uh, court cashier's desk uh, done in the back for uh, court. So she had that to work with. Uh, we got the uh, pool uh, tent up and then it was destroyed then we got it back up again uh, there was no uh, charge for the poles I talked to the company and they uh, graciously sent us all new poles for it and so uh, Justin and I got it put back up uh, last Friday uh, we got that done and we're also uh, demoing a new 12-foot uh, uh, Toro mower uh, this week <clears throat> out at the complex and in town here. You probably see us running around with that, trying to figure out a way to do more work with less uh, people because it looks like we're not going to get anybody to uh, apply and uh, give us a hand. So we're going to try to do it uh, 
do it a di different way. <clears throat> Thanks, Brad. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we're in from Public Works Director Guy Jeevers. Good evening, Mayor and Board. First time I have is my monthly report. Uh, just a highlight of that, we had a six-inch sewer main that was repaired on Hudson on the East Street. Uh, six-inch sewer on Briarwood was also repaired. Uh, we had a total of four sewer calls. Two were on private and two were on the city. Uh, four inch water main on Hawthorne Drive, uh, repair work on a fire hydrant on 47, and some sidewalk repair on North Market, and some culvert replacements on Veterans Memorial and Clare. A little touch on the monthly report and questions. No. Go ahead. No. Go ahead, guy. Uh, so the next time I need for approval is the intercept of sewer from Fair Lane lift station to the wastewater treatment plant. We had five bidders and I'm recommending to accept the low bid from Understall Construction Company for $1,897,072.50 and Understall was the one that did the first original sewer line from um, on the east side. Budget amount for this project is five million one hundred and thirty six thousand dollars. Yeah, the only thing I'm going to say on I know on my behalf is when you see somebody that far under you get you got a question sometimes yeah. why. <coughs> so I, I looked at the bid, bids on it and then they're all pretty close. They they came in at the, the at the lowest bid. A lot of it is the rock that they're not assuming is going to be there. That's the, they're all over the place though. Also, with that budget number, I believe that the pipe was. Yes, there are, there's also. So I also have. Let me finish that up. So that doesn't include the pipe. We purchased the pipe ourselves uh, because the pipe prices were going sky high so we, we went ahead and got a set price for the pipe and I have that as another proposal after approval of this one. Any other questions? No. I know. There's a motion to award the intercept for Fairlane to WWTP to bid to understall Understall Contracting Company in the amount of $1,897,072, I'm sorry, $1,897,072.50, the low bid. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, seconded by Alderman Jaspring. Alderman Cullen? Yes. Alderman Jaspring? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Motion passes six to zero. So the next item that I have is I'm asking for approval for 9,100 feet of 30 inch sanitary sewer pipe for the project from Fair Lane lift station to the wastewater treatment plant to Bamer Brothers Utility Supply at low bid for $543,179. And the budget amount for this project is five million one hundred and thirty six. With the combination of the two, is that correct? Yeah, so well under budget there. Right? <laughs> no. no. Right? It's a combination of the above. It's getting close, but we still are on right, the budget on this project. So far, absolutely. We'll be under the two. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. yeah that'll get so added. So far, but he'll it, be back. We're still <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. And if they hit rock, they'll probably be back Put again. Put up down the road before. <laughs> Any questions on the sanitary pipe? I'll entertain a motion to award the 30-inch sanitary sewer pipe supply bid to, to say it was Bamer Brothers in the amount of $543,179, the low bid. So moved. So I'll second. <laughs> what did you get for the first? I like it. 
Motion made by Alderman Deloy, seconded by Alderman Quarter. Quarter. Roll call vote. Alderman Jaspring? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crown? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullen? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Next item I have is for the UV disinfection. Um, the low bid was from Hageman Incorporated for $832,408. Uh, budget amount was a million dollars. I need approval for that. We had four bidders for that also. Any questions on that? I'll entertain a motion to approve the UV disinfection to w, or at the water waste treatment plant to bid to Hageman and, Com Hageman and Company in the amount of $832,408, the low bid. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Crump. Roll call vote. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jasper? Yes. yes. Motion passes 6 0. <coughs> That's all I have for now. Come on. Come on. That's all you got? <laughs> all right, bills the ordinance. I'll entertain a motion for first reading of bill number 42-21. So move. Second. Motion made by Alderman Deloy. Second by Alderman Crump. An ordinance regarding the vacation of a utility easement and dating said track to Milton and Sharon Gillette. Motion for second reading of bill number 42-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Jaspering. Thank An ordinance regarding the vacation of utility easement and deeding, deeding said track to Milton and Sharon Gillette. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 43-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman <coughs> Deloy, second by Alderman Schultz. In ordinance amending section 700.120 of the Municipal Code of the City of Wharton, Missouri, establishing rates for sewer service within and outside the corporate limits of the City of Wharton. Entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 43-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Cullum. An ordinance amending section 700.120 of the Municipal Code of the City of Wharton, Missouri, establishing rates for sewer service within and outside the corporate limits of the City of Wharton. I'll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 44-21. So moved. Second. Who do you have for second? Quarter. Motion be involved in Crump, second be involved in Quarter. In ordinance amending section 705.210 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri, establishing rates for the use and consumption of water within and outside the corporate limits of the City of Warrington. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 44-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Deloy, seconded by Alderman Cullum. I'm sorry, did you say Alderman Cullum? Yes. Okay. In ordinance amending section 705.210 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri, establishing rates for the use and consumption of water within and outside the corporate limits of the City of Warrington. Roll call vote. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump. Yes. Bill pass 6 0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 45 21. <coughs> so moved. Second. <coughs> motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Crump. Ordinance accepting the preliminary and final plat of the subdivision known as Cool College Edition subdivision by the City of Warrenton, Missouri. I'll entertain a motion, <coughs> our second reading for the bill number 45 21. So moved. Second. <laughs> Motion made by Alderman Schultz, seconded by Alderman Porter. 
An ordinance accepting the preliminary and final plat of the subdivision known as Cool College Edition Subdivision by the City of Warrenton, Missouri. A vote. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Go past the six to zero. <coughs> I will turn the page and let you know. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 46-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Quarter. An ordinance accepting the final plan of the subdivision known as the Estates of Pickney Ridge by the City of Warrenton, Missouri. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of Bill Number 46-21. So moved. I'll move. Second. I got Schultz. I'm going to give you. His... Deloy. All right. <laughs> motion, first motion made by Alden Schultz, second by Alden Deloy. In ordinance accepting the final plan of the subdivision known as the Estates of Pickney Ridge by the City of Warrenton, Missouri. We'll call vote. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Collum? Yes. Bill passes 6 to 0. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 47 21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Crump. An ordinance authorizing the rezoning of, of approximately 21.44 acres located at 1051 South Water Street from Ag Agricultural <coughs> Reserve District to R1 Low Density Residential District and amending the zoning district map thereon. Our intended motion for the second reading of Bill Number 47-21. So moved. Second. Good. All right. I'll take a quarter. That's fine. I'll. Uh, First motion made by Alderman Cullum, second by Alderman Quarter. An ordinance authorizing the rezoning of approximately 21.44 acres located at 1051 South Water Street from Ag Agricultural Reserve District to the R1 Low Density Residential District and amending the zoning district map thereon. Oh. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Bill passes 6-0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 48-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Cullum, seconded by Alderman Quarter. An ordinance accepting the preliminary and final plat of the subdivision known as Flake House Subdivision by the City of Warrenton, Missouri. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of Bill number 48-21. So moved. Second. second. Motion made by Alderman Deloy, second by Alderman Jaspering. An ordinance accepting the preliminary and final plat of the subdivision known as Flake House sub Subdivision by the City of Warrenton, Missouri. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Bill passes 6 to 0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 49 21. So Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Schultz. An ordinance of the City of Warrenton repealing Municipal Code Section 135.2208 regarding the Sheriff's Retirement Fund surcharge court cost. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of Bill Number 49-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Cullum, second by Alderman Quarter. Ordinance of the City of Warrenton repealing Municipal Code Section 135.2208 regarding the Sheriff's Retirement Fund surcharge court cost. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. I will entertain a motion to close the regular Board of Alderman meeting. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Crump. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. We are so adjourned.